Hi everyone, it's Vala from Online Combat Battalion with another Armor 3 editor tutorial for you. This one's in response to quite a few comments that I've had in the comments section of a few different videos where people seem to be confused about radio triggers and how they work and triggers in general. So we're going to be returning to very basic stuff in this tutorial, um, so it's not going to be very long. I just want to explain a few things, particularly when it comes to radio triggers. So let's get into it. I've placed a playable unit and I'm going to go up to F3 triggers and I'm just going to select a 10 by 10 trigger and place that down. Uh, if you don't know, you can move the trigger around by holding down left shift and left click and you can move the trigger. And also if you press the space bar four times, you can get these little move tabs and you can move and reshape the trigger. And I'm just going to leave that there and press space bar one more time to get rid of those move tabs. So with a trigger, we are uh, placing a trigger because we want something to happen. So the simplest way to demonstrate this is just to go up to F5 or Systems, down to Intel, Create Task, and I'm just going to place the task here. I'm also going to place a Set Task State here. So in the task, we're just going to open that up by left-clicking, double left-clicking. I'm going to go to or playable units. You can select blue four or op four, whatever. Um, I'm going to set that as task one and I'm just going to have it as move to here. And click, uh, let's go to assigned. Okay. And you can set the marker that is visible if you like. I'm just going to use a simple move marker. Okay. So that's our task set up. Now uh, we want the set task state to demonstrate that the task is completed. So I'm going to go in here by double left clicking and go to succeeded. I'm going to right click, go to connect, sync to and then left click on the task. Now to fire that task we need to use this trigger. So this trigger I'm just going to double left click to open it up and I'm going to set it as activation type any player and that will automatically switch to present. Okay, now I'm going to right click, connect, sync to and then left click on the task. Now to complete the task we need another trigger. So I'm going to go back up to triggers, grab another trigger 10 by 10, place it down and I might just resize it quickly and I'll place the Actually, first what I'll do is I'll just go into the trigger itself and I'll select the activation type as any player and that will switch to present. And because this trigger is completing that task, we need to sync that to the set task state. Right click, connect, sync to that trigger. And so that we're not confused, the actual move task marker will appear where I want the troops to move to so I'll place it inside the trigger area. So these triggers are set up for any player present and I'll show you how that works. So here we are in the mission there's no task displayed yet because any player which is me has not yet run through the first trigger. And there we go I've run into the first trigger and I've got a move task 15 meters in front and I'm just going to run and I've entered the second trigger and we have task completed. So now some clarification on how to use a radio trigger and how radio triggers work. So as I've explained this trigger is set for any player present. Um, I could play it, make it any player not present and then if I was in this trigger area the task won't actually fire until I'm out of the trigger area, if that makes sense. But what I'm going to do is set this to radio alpha. Okay, and you'll see the activation type is removed. Okay, activation type is removed. So this trigger now will not fire when this guy is inside the trigger area. He just won't. It won't fire because it's not that type of trigger. So because it's a radio trigger, it doesn't matter if I'm in it or out of it. 
uh, it won't do anything because it's a radio trigger that you have to manually activate. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm back in the mission and keeping in mind that that trigger is directly to my front. I'm now running into the trigger area and nothing is happening because it's a radio trigger and it's not activated by troops being present or not present. To activate the trigger, I'm going to press backspace and I'm going to use the scroll wheel to go to reply, then down to radio, then I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard for radio alpha and the task will activate. And there we go. So it's exactly the same process except you're using a radio trigger which you have to manually use. And again I've run into the trigger area and the task is completed. So with radio triggers if you want to have multiple triggers you can do that. So we're going to have radio alpha. I'll drop down another task or trigger here and I can set it as activation type radio bravo all the way down to Juliet. So you can have that many radio triggers in your mission. And if it's a radio or a trigger designed to spawn something or to present a message or to repair something or whatever, and you want that to actually work more than once, you just select repeatable. So a repeatable trigger. Uh, not so good for tasks, but good for things like um, spawning enemy troops, um, spawning um, things that explode in the road, all that sort of stuff. Um, we, so that if you're using multiple radio triggers so that you understand which trigger does which, uh, you can actually put text in here and I'll put spawn move task in the text field of that radio trigger. And now when I go to the radio triggers, I'll be able to see what that task actually does. And let me just for demonstration's sake, put this one here, set this one to Radio Bravo, and put in here uh, spawn enemy troops. And now when I go into the mission, uh, the radio triggers will be labeled with those names so that I know what each trigger does. So back in the mission and I'm going to hit backspace, reply, radio triggers and you can see now that the triggers have the name. First one is spawn move task and the second one is spawn enemy troops. So I know exactly what those triggers do. Okay, You can uh, move your scroll wheel to select it and then press left mouse button or you can simply click on the corresponding number on your keyboard. So that trigger there that I placed is now been fired but it doesn't actually do anything because it's not linked to anything. Okay so I'll go backspace zero zero and I'll now click one and it spawns the move task for me. Now a little bit of supplemental information just to uh, give you more of an idea of how the triggers work for those of you that may not have played around with triggers that much in the editor. So I'm going to change this from any player not present and to show you how this works. So uh, my playable unit is inside the trigger area. And because I'm inside the trigger area, I am present in the trigger. When I move out of the trigger area, i.e. not present, then the task will fire. So I hope that's cleared up the confusion regarding radio triggers. Um, they are not activated by anyone being present or not present. Uh, they must be manually activated and they can be repeatable and you can use them for a whole range of things, uh, tasks, spawning things, all that sort of stuff. Uh, there are some more detailed uh, and advanced tutorials on the way, but I just wanted to cover off this one quickly. So all the questions about radio triggers not activating when I run into them um, disappear. So we should all now understand how the radio triggers work. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments section below. As always, thank you for watching. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you in the next video.